Hello and welcome back to another splash of paint. Next up, it gives me great pleasure to welcome back popular pencil artist Malcolm Cudmore, who will be grabbing his favourite tinted charcoal pencils as he eliminates the fear attached to life drawing. Take it away, Malcolm. Hi, today I'm going to be doing a variation of a really old-fashioned style of technique of drawing that used to be called the trois crayons, three crayons. And I'm going to be working on some toned paper. This is a grey pastel paper and literally working with three pencils. A, uh, a very dark one, uh, a sort of mid-toned one, sort of a reddy brown colour, and a white one. And I'm going to be working on something that's going to be based on a sketch I took uh, a while ago. I'm an inveterate attender of life drawing groups and I have to say that if you have ever thought about it, have a go. It's a brilliant way of practising your drawing. And if you followed my way of drawing in the past, you'll notice that, you'll remember that I always try and work from the general to the particular. Get the general outline in first, get an indication of where the shadows and the values are, and even after five minutes you've got a pretty good representation of the subject. I've got some of my life drawings here. Now these are just five minute drawings. No personality particularly, but a general sense of the weight and the overall light on the subject. Here, that's five minutes, is another five minute pose. Uh, this is another five minute one. I've got some shapes in there and I've got an idea of what's happening to the light. Uh, uh, this one slightly longer, perhaps 15 minutes there. Get a little bit more detail. The longer you work, the more you can get detail in. Uh, it's another 15 minute pose there. But the, the one I've got up on my board at the moment is just a five minute drawing. I've got a shape, I've got some sense of the values and that's what I'm going to be working on with the three crayon technique. As with everything else, I'm going to start off trying to get a general representation of the shapes. I'm using tinted charcoal, by the way, which is, works a little bit like uh, pastel, but it's a little bit harder, but it's equally blendable. I'm just going to replicate the shape here of my original sketch. I'm not needing to be that faithful to it, but I need to try and make sure that everything is in the right place. So, for example, the way that her weight works, essentially on these heels here, tells us a little bit about the pose and about how this particular um, model was standing. So I'm just looking for the overall shapes here. And even if I'm not working from a live model, I still like to set my drawing surface up as if I were. So I'm, I'm almost pretending that I'm looking at a live subject here. Um, so I know that her heels have got to go under here. So I've got a, a relationship here between the leg and the weight of this pose. So I'm going to be first of all getting in some general shapes and then I'm going to be able to look at the, the values with the three crayon technique. If, uh, if you've ever thought about going to a life drawing group or a figure drawing group for that matter, and thought, oh, I don't think it's going to be really difficult. Um, well, yeah, it, it is to start with, but um, very, very soon you'll realise what great drawing practice it is. And uh, it's a really great way to learn how light works on solid objects by looking at the human form and the light. So, once again, I'm not terribly bothered about whether my workings show. See, I think I've got the head a little bit too far over, so that's better. Not too bothered about where the workings are, because I can begin to erase those. Depending on how much time I've got, I could always incorporate them into a, you know, some background detail, for example. Now, I only had five minutes to do the original sketch, so there's no real context for... Uh, for why or ha why she's uh, standing in this particular way. Um, you know, if I've got loads of time, then maybe I can add a background or just hint at a bit of a background there. Just a slight hint there of the overall shape. And once I'm happy with that, I can proceed to, you'll notice that I've, almost, I've actually drawn a line here on my original sketch. I did that very quickly in order to just identify for myself where was the light coming from. Actually, what you can't see in the sketch was there was an open or a, a, a window to daylight. 
um, on this side. On this side, the room was mostly in shadow. And so there's quite clear, bright illumination on the model's back. You'll also notice that uh, even though I'm essentially working and copying from a sketch I've already made, I'm still doing all my sort of uh, scaffolding lines, if you like. I think about like scaffolding. I'm looking at straight lines. If I could find a straight line that will help me to uh, define a shape, I'll use one. It's actually much easier to adjust a straight line than it is a curved or a complicated one. Uh, so I'm looking for big lines, general angles. If this was a real model, I'd be holding my pencil up to uh, just verify whether an angle was correct or not. And as long as I've got my, uh, my drawing surface and my uh, subject in the same kind of orientation, I'm going to be able to easily check one angle against another. There we go. So following my shadow lines, you'll notice that all of her head was in shadow, including her face. So I'm just going to put in some value because that was dark. I've been able to indicate pretty well light, medium value, and quite dark shadow, darker values. Um, those are the things that tell me a bit about the, a little bit about the shape. Now, there's some direct shadow under here, which is cast uh, by her arm, but the arm itself is also in shadow. In fact, the hand and the arm are all in shadow. So I'm just indicating some value in here. And I'm, I'm going to follow the, um, the lines that I drew in when I was looking at the shadow shapes initially. I can always modify these later on. You can see there was some bright light on the back of her leg here. That helps to define. And there was a sort of fringe of light there, and her heel was rather more illuminated. But here, the shadow was fairly, it sort of obscured the heel on this side. So I don't mind, I'm actually drawing in the shadow shapes. I will, as time allows, be modifying some of these shapes. But in the first instance, I want to just make sure I can get a sense of the values. And I'm simply going to put those values in really quite loosely. Just beginning to say a little bit about the, the three-dimensional quality of the subject. I've been quite loose. Uh, I've got erasers and blue tack and various other things that are going to help me to slide some of this pigment around. So working with a toned paper like this, which is already a kind of light grey colour, with the three pencils that I've chosen, these charcoal pencils, which are this sort of reddy brown colour, a nice dark colour, which is not quite black and white, I can actually use, I've got four distinct values. And uh, sometimes it be, can be quite hard to distinguish values in a subject. I always find it a great help if I'm a little bit confused about whether something is essentially light or essentially dark. Um, I literally squint. I half close my eyes, I peer at the subject through my eyelashes and half closed eyes. And that really does help to show me whether something is essentially light or essentially dark. And that, as a process, is uh, a really useful one. So I encourage you not only to work loose, but to squint at every opportunity. OK, so I've kind of got the shape in now. I'm quite happy about that. This sketch was originally done in such short time, as I say, about five minutes, that I didn't even have time to put any context of any kind. I will, of course, be putting a little bit of shadow under here, indicating from shadow. Um, I might choose to hang something from her hand, like a towel or something, or she could be resting, for example, against something. Um, 
no details in the hair at all yet. Um, I shall tidy up some of these edges with my blue tack and my electric erasers, which this pastel paper is quite smooth surface. It's not as toothy or as textured as many pastel papers, which makes erasing and modifying the marks. I'm just using a bit of blue tack. Oh, it's actually, it's a bit of blue and white tack mixed together. Um, it's a bit more adhesive than a putty rubber or a kneadable eraser. Uh, I'll do a lot of tidying up later on, but there we go. I'm happy now that I've essentially got the right shapes. I've already started, I've looked at two distinct values here. I've got the shape, I've got light things here, and I've got darker things here. And a little bit later on, after the break, I'm going to be coming back with my darker pencil and my white pencil to really begin to model some of the form in light. See you later. Cracking work there, Malcolm. I'm sure we're looking forward to seeing part two later on in today's programme. Well, folks, it's time for another short break, but join us in part three when we step into the fantasy world of Sharon Hurst and TV's favourite Keith Fennick shares some of his simple watercolour techniques. We'll see you soon. <laughs>